Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you Primal The Awakening, which is a boss battling minis game. In the game our heroes will go up against great big monsters. Because we are in a fearsome land, volcanoes are erupting and monsters seem to have got wind of us and don't really want us here. So we must fight. Over the course of 10 rounds, we need to defeat the monster. If we do that, we're victorious. We unlock some new story. We'll have crafting materials, craft new weapons, items, bits of armor. And we can then pick a new quest, potentially in a new land with new things available, new forges to unlock, new things to build across the 11 chapters of the campaign. Now, the game does come with an expedition mode as well, where you can just play one-off fights and it gives you setups for various difficulties of monsters, different setups for the heroes to have, or you can play it the campaign way and unlock them gradually as you craft things. There are many expansions available that add new monsters, that add two new heroes. In fact, one of these heroes that I've got set up with is from the Mount Havoc expansion. This is going to be available for reprint from Reggie Games' website. I'll put a link in the description in the corner of the screen to take you to the page, see all of the stuff that's included and how you can get your hands on the game. So I've got it set up for the prologue battle. So some minor spoilers, but just for the very first introductory battle of the game. So our aim is to defeat the Viraxan in this scenario. It has 10 wounds. And if we zoom in on his board, he's got some behavior cards. Now the monsters don't necessarily get a turn in this game. When we do things, we will trigger their behavior cards sometimes if we're not careful. And then the monster will react and do probably nasty things to us. They have stance cards. These tell us how much health the monster has. So it's got 10 wounds. While it's in stance one, if the Viraxon takes two damage per player, then it will take a wound. So in a two player game, four damage causes a wound. It can be attacked from the front or the back, these red sectors, and if it does damage, it does one damage to us. That can be increased by cards and things. Once it gets to seven wounds, it will transform into stance two. While it's in stance one, it's got a peril card here at the end of the round. If the aggro player is threatened, the aggro player is the player that has the aggro token. We choose who that is at the start of the game and certain cards will adjust who that is. If they become threatened, put a fire in the front sector. Fire is bad, you can't play cards if there's fire in your sector. And we have an objective. If we can attack it enough times from the rear, we'll put counters on this card. Put enough counters on, we will get to deal two wounds straight to the Viraxon. As we progress through the fight, different stances will cause the monster to toughen up, to get angrier, to react when these new stances are revealed. Sometimes you'll need to do more damage against the monster, although it depends what kind of monster you're fighting. New peril cards, new abilities will be unlocked, all in a quest to do these 10 wounds. So how do we do that? In a round of the game, we can consume. We have some starting potions in the prologue, but you can craft more as you go through the game, where we can heal a bit of health, you choose to do those in the consume step. Then the monster upkeep. In later rounds, it will discard its lowest value behavior card and put a new one out. And then it gains one struggle per player. Struggle is a currency for the monster. So it will spend struggle to do more powerful effects on its cards. Or when it reaches three struggle per player, it will unleash and it will do this amount of damage to us. And then it'll reset back to one per player. This can vary on the monster a lot. Some monsters just want to keep spending that struggle to really power up their cards. Some monsters just want to race to unleash. Then we have the player turns. So we go in clockwise order, starting with the aggro player. In this case, I've got Thoreg the hammer. We have some starting equipment in the prologue. Everyone just gets a base helm and base armor. This determines our health. We've each got nine health at the start of the game. And we have a basic weapon. Thoreg's got the hammer. It tells you what your deck is comprised of. So six of each color in the prologue. And all of our cards have this S to show that they're the starting cards. But later on, you will get to unlock new cards, customize your decks, and different weapons will have different configurations of the cards you'll have in and it has a special ability that we can trigger. First of all, you have the movement phase. So we start off facing the Viraxon. When you have the opportunity to move in your movement phase, you can move one adjacent sector at a cost of one stamina. So how do we play? How do we get stamina? You might have a token that gives it to you, but usually we have a hand of cards. Your hand limit by default is five, and the cards do all sorts of stuff, but at the bottom here is a stamina value. You can discard a card to get that much stamina. So Thoreg could spend one stamina and move to an adjacent space. There is terrain dotted about, depending on the scenario that you're playing. Uh, a bush can be hidden in and it kind of pauses your turn, lets other people go and you choose 
after whose turn you want to re-emerge and do the rest of your turn. Bathanis will heal you a damage at the start of your turn if you start in this sector. And Syrake will bump up your attacks if you're standing in that sector. So for one stamina, he could move around or he could choose to stay where he is. Now, if you stay where you are and don't move, then the monster is going to start to notice you more. You're going to be in more danger. So you become threatened. You take a threatened token, which might trigger one of the monster's behaviors. And it might mean you're more likely to take some damage a little bit later. But for now, we have the action phase. So in this, you can play cards from your hand. You can activate abilities that say action on them. We haven't got those yet. And you can revive KO'd players. But let's look at the cards in our hand. So they have a cost in the corner here. The cost is in stamina. If I want to play frontal assault, I need to discard two stamina's worth of cards. There's no change on the cards. If you pay two to pay for one, then you don't get anything back. And there is an aggro section of the cards. If you play a card with the red aggro symbol, you're going to take the aggro token. There are four types of cards. There are offensive cards and defensive cards. The defensive cards, dodge and parry, don't have an inherent effect, but will help you in the attrition phase that we'll see in a minute. But playing a card will often give you an ability that activates. Sometimes those abilities will depend on other cards. So for example here, decisive effort. It costs a stamina to play, so discard something to play that. It does nothing by itself, but this symbol here means the arrow is this card, and then the red means if you played an attack card after it, you would trigger any effects that might be on your equipment, on previous cards that you've played wanting you to do sequences, and then you activate the card's main ability. So here, Decisive Effort would increase the damage of this attack, red cards or attack cards, by three times your weapon level. Early on, we've just got a weapon level of one. And the Frontal Assault would let you choose a player to draw one. If you are in the front sector, they draw two instead. And then the attack would kick off. Normally, an attack does your weapon's damage, which is two here for the basic hammer. Increased by three for decisive efforts. It would do five damage to the Viraxon. We know that four does a wound. And you'd have one damage left over for the next wound. And the final type is maneuvers. So charge here. I choose a player to draw a card. So the cooperation, you can be choosing yourself, of course, but you might want to help other players get more cards. And the blue cards are maneuvers. The basic ability for playing one of those, as well as anything else that might trigger, is remove a struggle. But Thoreg's Hammer has a special ability. If you play a blue, if you're in the front sector, increase the struggle the maneuver removes by one. So it would remove all of the struggle and the Varaxon would have nothing to spend. That's all nice as just an example of what cards basically do, but it's not as simple as that. As soon as Thoreg would have played his attack card, the Viraxon is lying in wait for somebody to play an attack card. So after the attack had been fully resolved, we would then go to the Viraxon and reveal its behavior card. Blazing Assault, the active player discards the top three cards of their deck and suffers damage unless a defensive card is discarded in this way. He has got a defensive card in those discards, otherwise he would take one damage. But the Viraxon could spend two struggle at this point to repeat that ability. So we'd have to discard another three cards and see if he got a defensive card. Hey, he did. He's lucky. So you will have control over when these things go off. So is playing that attack card worth it? Is it going to do enough damage to make up for whatever the monster is going to do? These cards will cycle as well. So you'll get used to the kind of things the monster will do in the fight. This will trigger when you play a maneuver card. This will trigger if you start your turn at the back of the monster. Some will happen anyway, like this is just the end of the round. Other monsters will have cards that trigger immediately as soon as they're drawn. Characters will sometimes have cards that let them stop these cards, like Thoreg's got this that can be discarded whenever heavy cards are revealed to immediately move or to completely cancel the effects of the card. You can also inflict status ailments on the monster to stop the peril for a bit if you blind it, to stop the effects of one of the cards triggering for the rest of the round if you stun it and do some extra damage. You can confuse it so it can't pay struggle for its boost abilities. It still spends the struggle, but it doesn't actually get to resolve the effect. And another trigger could be Rampage. So if we had been in this position and Thoreg had played his red attack card, we would have done this as normal, discard it. But then you do the Rampage card after you have resolved a behavior card. Should be place a fire terrain in the front sector and then people in the front sector might take damage if he's got struggle to pay for that. Fire's bad, stops you playing cards and it ticks down gradually round by round and goes away and you're at risk of getting burnt if you go in there. So Thoreg would play all the cards that he wanted to and then at the end of his turn he has an attrition phase. There is an attrition deck here that has got cards with value 0 to 3 I think by default. Uh, so you draw one of these and 
2. It says on it, if you have played two or more defensive cards, it's got the defensive symbol, you are safe. Otherwise, you need to take damage from the monster. So 1 in this case. But it's even worse for Thorag. Say this had been a 1, he's threatened, so he actually has to draw 2 and keep the worst one. Oh, well, it's 2 and a 2. We also have these mastery cards here. They have a condition on them, so Thorag's massive blow. When you stun the monster, put a counter on this card. Thorag has some cards that will stun the monster. Once the monster has been stunned twice, so there's a two on this side of it, you flip it over and he can now do massive blow. Whenever he does a blue, his hammer's got an ability and he would deal two extra damage. If he can do the combo blue, red, red next to each other in his sequence, he would stun the monster. And sometimes cards will have symbols on them, so the heavy smash here, if you played it, you would remove a struggle. But if your mastery was unlocked, you'd remove three instead, so cards can have extra things as you unlock these masteries. And let's have a little look at Kara over here, the dual blade. So Kara has piercing dash. When you overrun the monster, place a counter on this card. All of the heroes have a special player reference with their keywords that will appear on their cards. So overrun is a way that Kara can go to the other side of a monster, shooting through the monster. So usually you can only move to adjacent spaces. Kara has a lot of opportunities to overrun. And say she had refused to move at the start of the turn and gotten a threatened token. If she overruns, she gets rid of that, as you do when you move generally as well. One of Kara's things is playing a lot of offensive cards. So backstab here, it has stealth. That means that it won't trigger a behavior card. You could keep it for when she overruns the monster. She can discard this to deal four damage, but she could just play it as an attack doing two damage. And then she has cards with chain on them. This means she doesn't actually have to pay the stamina cost as long as the card before it in the sequence is a red in this case. Increase your sequence limit by one. Usually you can only play five cards per turn in your sequence unless you've got cards that improve that. So that would be another attack, but it's got the red icon. She would take the aggro token because at the end of each player's turn, the monster will turn to face the aggro player, which can make a difference. Like if Kara ends up overrunning the monster, and he faces the other way, Thoreg might well start his turn facing the tail and trigger another card. So when Kara starts to play these offensive cards in sequence, she triggers her battle dance. So this deals three damage per weapon level. So three damage at level one. When you've played your second offensive card in a row, red or blue just has to be offensive. And her basic dual blade says, when you trigger battle dance, deal a damage. So it would be four on top of the actual attack of the weapon that could be boosted in some way as well by other characters. Your fourth is five damage and your sixth is seven damage. Of course, you would need to increase your sequence limit and probably draw some more cards, which you can do, but you can help other players as well. There are cards like assist. You can discard this on another player's turn to enable that player to draw a card. Each player can only assist a player once on their turn, but it can be vital getting those extra cards, especially if you need to play tons in of particular kind in a row. There are taunt cards as well, which let you take the aggro token away from the active player and make the monster face you instead. The characters can all play very, very differently. So we would keep fighting across 10 rounds. If you don't do it in 10 rounds, you lose and you've got to try again. But if you manage to get rid of all 10 wounds before the time runs out, you win the fight, you have some more story, and then you start to go into the chapters, which I won't spoil the story here, but I am doing playthroughs. And you can go to forges where you will unlock items craft new weapons, potions at the herbalist, and get offered new quests so you can take on more and more monsters. The built-in campaign is over 11 chapters, but you can play an expeditions mode where you just play a one-off game. And there is a smaller three-chapter campaign in the Mount Havoc expansion too. As I say though, I am doing playthroughs. So I'm doing a full playthrough of the prologue fight, and then I am definitely going to do the chapter one playthrough as well, where we will unlock all of our stuff and start to craft things and then have another fight. The prologue playthrough will be going up very soon after this one, with chapter one's probably not far behind. So I hope you'll be intrigued by Primal and tune into those. So again, this is available to pre-order from Reggie Games' website. You can check out all of the new stuff, how to get hold of the game, and happy hunting. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.